Welcome to this course in Basic Norwegian. In this first lecture, we're going to deal with uh, pronunciation. Pronunciation is generally not a big issue in uh, Norwegian. Uh, well, and not in a big issue in the sense that people will not understand what you mean, but uh, it, of course you will have a accent when speaking in Norwegian and also to uh, limit that. It's good to learn all uh, right from the beginning the special sounds. In this lecture, we will deal with the sounds. Of course, there is exception, etc. But that would be too long of a list. But here it's the thing I think you basically should know from the beginning. We start here with the alphabet. I will repeat and you just try to... Well, I will read, sorry, and you repeat. I will have a small pause between each letter. One... Um, Little note before we start, the R. There's many R's in Norwegian. Mine is from Bergen, so it's kind of scarring, but there's other, other rolling R's. I wouldn't focus too much about copying my R right now, because yeah, there are probably other R's that's more easy for you. So when you hear audio, you can just uh, yeah copy them. Or also, your R is probably also okay. Uh, so it is it's not something I would focus on. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, we will go through the alphabet and then including the last three letters, which is uh, unique for Scandinavian languages. And all of these are vowels, though, but we will get to that later. So, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N O P Q R S T U V W X I, Z, A, Ö, O. So if we just repeat a few letters, uh, can you repeat Q, Q, U, A, uh, oh. Yeah, uh, and you, of course, you can uh, repeat that a few times just playing the audio back. This uh, second option in J, the chord, this is more to emphasize because J sounds very similar to E, etc., and some other C, other letters. So therefore, I just to emphasize it, uh, yeah. if you want to uh, spell your name, if your name has a J, then it would be good to use this form of it, just to emphasize. Uh, one of the rules we, we, yeah, we will take care, it's about long and short vowels. Generally, this is not a causes too much problem. I think mostly, seems to me that the... Uh, it's more like a guideline line when you're going to write, because I don't notice people making much mistakes with this when speaking. Uh, maybe a little when reading, but it can be a bit difficult to read a foreign language. So, uh, or, uh, and the rule is simply that if a vowel is followed by two consonants, like here in this A, 
then kk it will have uh, it will be short if it followed by one consonant it will be long so if you just repeat after me the long first the long one on the left side and then short one sorry uh, so if you just repeat after me the short one on the left side and then the long one on the right side uh, yeah. tuck talk pen pen bilda bil stilla steel yeah vocabulary here naturally is not so important right now another thing is that the e you should also be aware of the e's it it's often it uh, has is pronounced like an e but also it has an, often an a sound particularly in end of words and before r's for, for instance here this word i will say dar har jai rena notify notice how the first e and the second e is different in this word so rena yeah as i said this is mostly like when uh, this with the short and long vowel it's probably most when you re, uh, are going to write because if you want to emphasize uh, figure out if it's if a word which you know has a long, uh, double or a single consonant you you often can get the hint based on how it sounds for example to like or like like to lick or lick etc you will automatically figure that out and uh, if we just go to this part which often causes problem and it's uh, well it not causes problem it's just to that when you when you speak quickly or when you read a text or something it's kind of difficult to forget kind of easy to forget sorry and uh, so if you see these letter combinations sj ske skj sky you get the sound s it is the same sound you have in english for ship ship so uh, if you repeat these words sheldon sheep shula shita in this combination k y k e k j you get the sound sh this sound you don't have or i'm not familiar with in english so if you repeat after me chist chirke chöre so if i just read them naturally without emphasizing the sound chist chirke chöre The third element uh, also like in english ng don't have a strong g sound it's it's like one sound so mange lang mange lang there is a lot of vowels combination naturally the one that really causes a lot of problem even at intermediate letter, le uh, level is the au eu so which is o o so if you repeat after me australia europa so euphoria australia europa so euphoria yeah naturally uh, this is also uh, since they are not of course this common this last vowel it it's very seems to be very difficult to remember also but eventually it will be used to it and also the, the reason it's good to learn Norwegian sound in the beginning because you as you hear a lot of words that is 
very similar in Norwegian and English. It's very easy if your English is your native tongue to read it in an English way. For instance, England. England. It's very easy to write it, uh, read it like England. Some uh, as in English. Um, the next we will take here is just silent letters. Silent letters is quite common in Norwegian, except uh, ex uh, especially in end of word. If you have words ending in leg, you will have a silent g. Vanli, Markeli. We have the g is not so, uh, spoken. It also applies to most ig. Usually, it will be if you have IG, this G is, in sil is silent, but not 100%. If it's LEG, the G is silent. G and H is silent in front of J, and H is in front, uh, silent also in front of V. Otherwise, you will say the H. So, Yallach, Yul, and then the HV words, which also includes all the question words. Vam, va, vur, vurfo. Vam, va, vur, vurfo. Yeah. Who, what, where, why. The D's is also uh, very often silent, particularly in end of words, and if it follows. And if it's after a long vowel, for instance, uh, buch, rotel, uh, me, which is a common word for with meaning with, have silent e, me, because it uh, silent e because the e it's long. And then, if you have some consonant like l and n, you kind of make it like it sounds. Uh, you will not write it like kal, but or run, but you will kind of read it like it is a double consonant. So kal, run. But of course, uh, when it comes to this with the D, there is a lot of exceptions. Some like fildi, fildi. You wouldn't this last. You wouldn't re uh, read it fildi, which would be wrong, even though. Yeah. Hopefully, this gives you just, if you remember these elements right now, and then you build upon that when we go along with text and yeah, and also the, the other grammar part. Because uh, there is quite a bit of words that has a bit unique pronunciation, but yeah, hopefully you now uh, learn at least some of the basic. Thank you and see you in lecture one.